When I arrived, Cuba was in the middle of a modest free market reform. There were private restaurants, there were there was private real estate sales, Cubans could buy and sell their cars. But very shortly after I arrived, to the surprise of, of almost everybody, uh, Raul Castro and Barack Obama declared the start of normalization between the two countries. And that really launched a roughly two and a half year period of a sort of incredible boom. To a modest extent, new business between the US and Cuba, and then to a tremendous extent, a flood of tourists, celebrities, and, and other figures into Havana, and it really sort of rocket charged this sort of incipient, nascent uh, private sector that had just been starting to grow when I arrived. Cuban sort of internal control in, in all spheres, particularly in, in, in the economic, has been really tied for you know, 60 years to the sense of hostility with the U.S. And the opening with the U.S. and the, this incredible sort of historic break of a U.S. president coming to Havana and the symbolism of that, I think, had Cubans who'd been waiting for sort of positive change for such a long time, had them really optimistic, probably unrealistically optimistic, about the, f the possibility that their lives could change and their future could change on the island. Maybe their dream shouldn't be to leave the country in order to have a business elsewhere, but they could invest in the country, they could start a business, they, they started envisioning a different Cuba. Raul took quite dramatic steps at the beginning, he proved that he certainly was willing and able to break from his brother's legacy. When we look back now, 10 years after he took power, it's a different matter of how much he was able to do. But certainly with the, with the rapprochement with the US, I mean, that was for Cuba. It was a very bold move. I mean, he, he did break from the past. The moment that this sense of unstoppable forward momentum and that Cuba and the U.S. were really on a unstoppable break from the past, the moment that that changed, it's very easy to pin, was, was election night. That very night, when, when, it, when Trump started taking state after state and it became clear that he was going to win, there was an immediate sense of shock and disappointment in Cuba. A fair number of people started making a lot of money relative to Cuba during the Obama opening. There were just hundreds of thousands of more tourists and a lot of that commerce was being captured by the private sector and people were getting what Cuba considered to be unacceptably wealthy. That was something that probably was going to be slowed down regardless of what was happening. Trump added to that immensely because tourism slowed down sharply, which meant there was less money to go around. And also the environment, the international environment, and the sense of being on a besieged island came back and increased. The, the third factor is Cuba is about to go through a historic transition. The message from the government has been consistently, this is not a big change. But of course, this is the family that forged the system that is modern Cuba. I mean, it is the degree to which the first Fidel and then Raul, to, to which the, the name and the system have been won, is, uh, it's impossible to overstate. We'll start to see to what extent this experiment has succeeded of, gi of giving Cuba a government that runs rather than a system that executes the order of a general.